Halfway up the Dampier Peninsula, north of Broome, lay three small spits of land that make up the Lassipede Islands. Lonely and deserted today, it is hard to imagine how these tiny atolls could have played such a pivotal and dramatic role in the development of the northwest. In 1885, sailing vessels roaming the rugged Kimberley coastline discovered a rich source of guano, or phosphate, on the islands. Guano is made entirely of bird droppings and was highly sought after as a fertiliser. The guano deposit was extensive because the islands are home to thousands of seabirds who have been nesting and raising their young here for centuries. Soon the mining of guano was in full swing and the islands attracted scores of trading ships from as far away as the Americas who were out to profit from the island's lucrative resource. But trouble was brewing and when some ship owners started to get a little greedy for guano, the Lacipedes became the focus of a heated international incident. Dr Cathy Clements is one of Western Australia's most eminent historians and an expert on the history of the North West. One incident that people remember best for the Lacipede Islands was the raising of the American flag there and the claiming that it was an American possession. The American incident, as it became known, was short-lived, but it drove the Western Australian government to station a representative at the Lonely Outpost and reclaim it for Australia. The whole guano industry, because it was um, based on islands and coastal areas, was a very risky business because a ship had to be anchored for weeks while the guano was loaded. There was no way other than intuition and knowledge for a boat captain to tell whether a cyclone was likely to come in. So if a boat was at anchor when a cyclone blew in, it was very likely that the ship would be driven ashore. Um, there, so there were numerous shipwrecks. In February 1877, ten large sailing vessels anchored at the Lacipedes were destroyed in one of the most devastating cyclones on record. By the time the guano began to run out, pearling luggers from further down the coast started to arrive in search of pearl shell and Aboriginal labour. Their often cruel and unscrupulous quest for Aboriginal divers and deckhands became known as blackbirding. Blackbirding took place in the Kimberley in the 1870s and 1880s. They hunted down the Aboriginal people, chained them, took them to the coast, and in some instances are said to have put them on the Lacipede Islands and held them there until they could take them to have them signed officially as labour for a per particular pearling boat. Aboriginal women were especially sought after, as they were better divers and able to stay under water longer. But they were often abused and cruelly treated by their harsh bosses. Today, any reminders of the island's tumultuous past have blown away, rusted into dust, or disappeared into the ether of eternal oblivion. The island has returned to its rightful owners, the frigates, boobies and terns, who rely on its remoteness to safeguard their rookery from egg-stealing predators. And the tides and seasons and cycles continue in a natural wonder world, far removed from the greed cruelty and polluted sands of time.